Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Many other Americans have Muslims in their families or have lived in a Muslim-majority country. I know because I am one of them. But my father came from a Kenyan family that includes generations of Muslims. As a boy, I spent several years in Indonesia and heard the call of the Azan at the break of dawn. I have known Islam on three continents before coming to the region where it was first revealed. That experience guides my conviction. You're absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. As the Holy Quran tells us, the Holy Quran teaches that, the Holy Quran tells us, and the Holy Quran also says, I am in my second term. It has been an extraordinary privilege for me to serve as the President of the United States. I cannot imagine a greater honor or a more interesting job. I love my work. But under our Constitution, I cannot run again. I can't run again. I actually think I'm a pretty good president. I think if I ran, I could win. But I can't. Well, there it is. Your Muslim president, naked in his homeland. And those of you who say he has no sympathies for is uh, Iran, well, maybe you want to think that through again. Now you understand why he gave Iran a green light to develop a nuclear weapon. It's that simple. He didn't say that he has any Jewish blood. He didn't go to his homeland of Israel. He went to his homeland of his father, the homeland of his father, Kenya. Nothing wrong with being a Muslim because as we well know, there are Muslims trying to destroy ISIS. Jordan, Egypt, for example, are trying to destroy ISIS, and Obama is not helping Iran or Jordan, um, uh, excuse me, Jordan or Egypt. Now, why is Obama not helping Jordan, a moderate Muslim nation with a Western-looking leader? Why is he not helping Egypt, is fighting ISIS? Why instead is he helping Iran, a terrorist nation? I guess if, you know, you know I, I wrote a statement when I was 18. Those who know will always know, and those who won't will never. Nothing has changed. The ignoramuses rule the media. The ignoramus is like John Stewart. The ignoramus is like Jerry Riviera. These are ignoramuses not known for their intellect. They're government jesters. They've always been bootlickers. They've over been, always been government jesters their whole life. And so they take the side of the devil. Something new came out. You, you think you heard it all right. Well, before you turn that dial, this came out minutes ago. On the Iran deal, you know that little thing of giving a terrorist nation a nuclear weapon? The same man who insisted he was going to uh, take away nukes from the world? Remember Obama? Mr. Obama. Mr. Anti-Nuclear Communist Leftist Psychotic Obama. He was going to rid the world of nuclear weapons. Well, he's now giving a terrorist nation, a pathway to a nuclear weapon or 10. So today, since the Iranians know that they have total control over this stooge in the White House and ketchup carry the stooge moron, they now raise the stakes the way Iranians will. They know they got everything they want and now they want more. So today, just today, Iran insisted on taking their own soil samples at any alleged nuclear site. Own officials be able to take soil samples at a suspected nuclear site in the latest iteration of its raising the stakes on that. I don't know what word there is for Kerry. There's no word for him in the English language. Quisling comes to mind. Most of you don't know who Quisling is. I've explained it many times on the show. But what's the point of explaining anything? Those of you who know will always know, and those of you who don't will never. Those of you who laugh at John Stewart's jokes written for him by far more intelligent men think that he's actually funny. He is a government jester. Do you know what that means? A clown paid for wholly by the government. A government jester. Came out today, he was secretly in and out of the White House 
so his boss, Obama, uh, could tell him what to say on the laugh-a-thon. Then we played Obama with his Muslim roots thing, and he gave a speech in Africa saying he's in his second term. Under our Constitution, he said, I cannot run again. Under our Constitution, he said, I cannot run again. What do you mean, under our Constitution? There was a constitutional amendment that was passed in 1947. Why can't he hold a vote to wipe that out? I think that uh, Boehner would go along with it, the man who cries at a golf course. Boehner could get on a pink shirt and a pink tie and start weeping over how wonderful that is. Just think how that would be. If Boehner could do it, don't you think he would extend a third term to Obama and wipe away the amendment that prohibits running for a third term? Just think about how good that would be for the Republican establishment. A, none of their candidates can win except Trump, who they've tried to destroy. So this would make their life easier. Make their life very easy. So I think Obama's toying with the idea of maybe running for a third term. How do you fear Obama might stay in office for a third term? Let's just, let's talk about it. How do you fear Obama might stay in office for a third term? This is a reminder, though, to my regular listeners. Donald Trump will be on the show tomorrow. Donald Trump will be on the show tomorrow to answer. Um, you know what? You can call the show. No, I don't want to get into the Trump thing right now. Maybe tomorrow before his appearance, I'll ask you what you want me to ask him. But I don't know. I don't even want you to do that. I, I know what I want to ask him. Iran insists on taking own soil samples at alleged nuclear site. There are many other headlines that can get you so sick that I don't know if I can read them to you. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can read them to you. Some of them are getting so bad, it's getting insane. The world's going, now it's not all Obama's fault, just mostly. But there are some other stories that can get you crazy. You know about Cecil the lion that I talked about yesterday? You know about the aborted fetuses that are being sold for their body parts by the vermin in, in Planned Parenthood? The neo-Nazi descendants in Planned Parenthood. See, you always thought that the neo-Nazis would come with a skinhead and tattoos all over their bodies. You thought they'd have a swastika on their forehead. You didn't know that they could wear skirts. You didn't know that they could be radical feminists sitting in brick-lined restaurants talking about dismembering and selling body parts of infants. You don't know that we've become the Nazis under the regime of Planned Parenthood, the descendant of Margaret Th Margaret Sanger, the eugenicist, who encouraged Hitler to get rid of the undesirables. You don't know any of this. Here's something else you don't know, you fools. L.A. gang's hashtag bet kill 100 people in 100 days. Hold it before you turn that dial. Under the hashtag slash 100 days, 100 nights, users on Instagram and Twitter are issuing a stark warning. Two L.A. street gangs are betting which one can kill 100 people within the next 100 days in a gang or innocent. This was confirmed exclusively to the Daily Beast on Monday night. A member of one of the gangs was uh, killed last week. Gang members say it will remain on for 100 days straight and innocent people driving between the streets of Western and Normandy in Los Angeles could be risking their lives over a game on Twitter. Can you believe this is going on in your country? Can you believe that the police have been so deballed by the liberal judges who let innocent women be killed in San Francisco from illegal aliens who went in and out of this country as though they owned it, stepped on our flag, in and out of the country and killed Kate? Can you believe that Nancy Pelosi would object to Kate's law, which would prohibit sanctuary cities from operating as though they're a criminal enterprise above the law. Can you believe that we would have fallen to this level, that Nancy Pelosi would celebrate planned parenthoods, infanticide, the Italian grandmother, Nancy Pelosi, who you thought was as disgusting and as low as a human being could be, now comes out the other day and says she wants the organization, the journalists who exposed the infanticide to be investigated by the new Nazi Congress. You thought that the neo-Nazis were skinheads with swastikas, didn't you? You didn't know that they could come with lipsticks and high heels. You didn't know any of this, did you? You didn't know that your police have been disarmed, psychologically disarmed by Obama and that street rat Al Sharpton and Eric Holder to the point where they cannot even stop these killings in Los Angeles. And it started. 
100 days, 100 nights, they threatened to kill 100 people over the next 100 days straight, innocent or gang members in Los Angeles. Can you believe this? Can you believe that this is going on in your country? This civil war is ongoing in this country? Here's another headline. Obama's Kenyan hometown in disbelief at his no-show. When President B, O, first announced his visit to Kenya, the people of CIA thought for sure he would visit Kogelo to see his father's grave. It's the home county of Obama's family and the Luo ethnic group, one of the largest ethnic groups in Kenya. His step-grandmother, Mama Sarah, who he calls Granny, told the press she would cook chicken fish in Ugali for his visit. A local radio station announced O had plans to be in town for three whole hours, so the local people painted signboards, entrepreneurs made T-shirts, towns were cleaned up, buildings were painted, parks were seated. They wanted to make it look nice and green for President O. And the celebrations were to be called Obama Night. They invested a lot of money, and they showed rams, goats, and bulls. They assembled them in the town square, rams, goats, and bulls. But then just before the trip, President O announced he would not be visiting the town, and he would not be visiting a couple of dozen close family members, including Mama Sarah. Mama Sarah was called to Nairobi to see him there instead. Well, hysteria ensued. Residents called into local radio shows wailing in disbelief. Columnists chided him, and local witch doctors tossed shells and animal bones on the ground in his hometown, tossed shells and animal bones on the ground in his hometown, claiming it wasn't true and the president would indeed come. Well, I guess that the uh, tradition of his father's town of tossing shells and animal bones didn't work. Boy Scouts of America votes to end ban on openly gay scout leaders. What do you mean controversial ban? L look how the article is written. Boy Scouts of America votes to end controversial ban on openly gay scout leaders. No, I think that the controversy is to permit openly gay scout leaders. That, that's how I would write the story. Boy Scouts of America, as you know, is facing shrinking membership because nobody wants their boys in that despicable organization. And I'm a former Boy Scout. Never, never would I send a child of mine to a... Boy Scouts of America where they have openly gay scout leaders. That's all. That's my opinion. That's my right. It's a private organization. Uh, and by the way, those of you who like communism, socialism, or let us say progressivism, whatever you're calling it today, in New York City was taken over by such a progressive moron, de Blasio, and now attacks by the homeless have gotten so out of hand that the city is asking the police to do something about it. There have been attack after attacks in New York City by homeless people. One of them involved a 72-year-old architect who was standing on a corner who was stabbed in the neck with a pair of scissors by a homeless woman. The other attack was on a Chinese tourist leaving his Grand Central Hotel. He was hit in the face by a two-by-four as he walked out of the hotel by a homeless man. I guess New York is a summer festival after all to uh, paraphrase the old statement by John Lindsay. New York is a summer festival. Just go there with full body armor. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I love my work, but under our Constitution, I cannot run again. I can't run again. The word Constitution. You're in Africa, of course. I actually think I'm a pretty good president. I think if I ran, I could win. But I can't. U.S. presidents are limited to serving only two full terms in the White House under the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution, which reads as follows. No person shall be elected to the office of the president more than twice. Notice the emphasis on the word elected. Now, the word elected to Obama and his government jester, John Stewart, and his stooge attorney general is a laugh line because they can get around that word. This is what he's done his whole life. 
He's always found a way to weasel around words. And that is how he has destroyed America from within, flooding America with immigrants that will destroy this country as sure as I'm sitting here within 50 years. Now, if you can bring in your entire family and the rate of welfare, food stamps, in other words, public benefits that are sucked out of the system by illegal aliens so greatly exceeds that of the native population. Tell me who in the long run doesn't believe that this population can support itself in the long run. Why has he changed the state of Virginia from a Republican state to a Democrat state in just f a few short years? 2010, it was one way. Now in 2015, it's another. Did you know that one-fifth of all of El Salvadorians are living in America? One-fifth the population of the entire country of El Salvador is living in the United States of America. How did that happen? What is he actually doing? No person shall be elected to the office of the president more than twice. Approved by Congress on March 21st, 1947, during the Truman administration. Ratified by the states February 27th, 1951. Think about that one. How many years later it took to be ratified. No person shall be elected to the office of the president more than twice. Do you hear this? Elected. Who says he has to be elected? Why can't he just say, you know what, I'm... Hey, we don't need elections. I'm, I'm I'm Barack Obama. We don't need no elections. I'm Barack Obama. I nullify the election. Section one. No person shall be elected to the office of the president more than twice. No person who has held the office of president or acted as president for more than two years of a term to which some other person is elected. President shall be elected to the office of president more than once. You get the picture? This article shall be inoperative unless it shall have been, ah, blah, blah, blah. I said the word here, the operative word is elected to the office of the president. Now, the word elected to this maniac and his government jesters, like John Stewart, is a laugh line. Just as the Constitution is a laugh line. Just as selling baby body parts is a laugh line to John Stewart. You understand it means nothing to any of them. I wonder if it's medication. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So your president, who would give Iran a terrorist nation, and they admit Iran is a terrorist nation, a nuclear weapon, is lobbying very hard to make sure that Congress votes for it. And he says in his lies that there's no good argument against it that are based on facts. This is the same methodology that's being used to peddle the big lie of global warming. Again, you gotta listen to this stuff to believe how they're on the same script, that the sorority who works for him keeps using the same narrative for every one of his big fat lies. So listen to clip nine. And you'll hear, you'll hear the verbal fingerprints of the sorority all over this. Listen. The good news, I guess, is that I have not yet a, heard a factual argument on the other side that holds up to scrutiny. Um, there's a reason why 99% of the world thinks this is a good deal. It's because it's a good deal. There's a reason why the overwhelming majority of Nuclear scientists and non-proliferation experts think it's a good deal. It's because it's a good deal. It's a good deal for the terrorist nation of Iran and their fellow travelers in the White House. It's a very good deal for them. Now, he says that there's no uh, argument from the other side that holds up the scrutiny, right? So now let's go to John Ketchup Kerry being grilled by a real senator, Ted Poe. Listen to the YouTube piece in clip 11. The secret deal... Secretary Rice said that she has seen this deal with the IAEA and that it will be shared with Congress. So if she's seen it, have you seen it? I don't believe that uh, Susan Rice, National Security Advisor, has, has seen it. I think she, she said she did six days ago. She said six days ago she had seen it well, I and don't reviewed know it and seen that Congress it. will get to see it in a classified section. My question is, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. I've been briefed on it. And, but uh, you haven't read it. You haven't seen it. Uh, 
Let me ask you, you don't this. Possess uh, it. It's in the possession of the IEA. Are you going to read it? We don't have access to the actual agreement. Or at least but Secretary Rice has access to it, but okay, you don't have access there. to it. You know, know I'm getting nauseous reading this, playing it for you. Can you believe that a man like this is not immediately arrested by a federal marshal for espionage or consorting with the enemy, taken out in handcuffs? Immediately, just call a, 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 a marshal, take him out in handcuffs. You know, I, I, one of the shows I like to watch on television is American Greed. And you see how high they fly. The bigger the liar, the higher they fly, and the longer they fly. There was one last night about some swindler, some Spanish-named guy, I don't know, with a sp smooth accent, smooth Spanish accent, lived in Miami, conned people out of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars on real estate scams, pictured with Obama, pictured with uh, Bush. They were all on his uh, board as he kept conning money from banks and the government itself. This went on for years. And him and his wife lived the high life, really the high life, this con man. And no one could ever nail him. Smooth and smooth and smooth. He knew he was smarter than everybody. Well, at the end of it, they interview a young FBI agent who talks about how after they took away his house on Star Island, after it was found guilty after years of investigation and trials, he moved to his condominium in Miami, a beautiful condo, and he continued to run a scam from the condo. Then one morning at 5 a.m., they broke down the door and they, he ex explained how this man looked when they handcuffed him. They said he went to pieces. He was in disbelief. It couldn't happen to him. That reminds me of these people in the government. The only thing they will ever understand is being arrested for what they're doing. There are no consequences to, for any of them. They're above the law. And I say to the people listening to this show, where is our Elliot Ness? We have a gang running this country, a rogue gang, an out-of-control rogue gang, running this country as though they own it. Oh, I could give you the standard. It's not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. You've heard it all before. I don't have to repeat that. But I can guarantee you it's a criminal gang running this country. What's even worse is I'm used to criminals running the country. I've lived long enough to see it in many administrations on both sides of the aisle. Don't think I'm sitting here supporting George Bush. I railed against the contractor gangsters who profited off the war in Iraq. I railed against it for years, those of you who know the show. The contractors should have been imprisoned for what they were doing. They ran that war as long as they could, the same way many medical societies keep diseases going because the last thing they want is a cure. The only thing that will ever, ever stop them is imprisonment, arrest and imprisonment. Nothing else will save us from them. He's not seen, he's not heard. Most nuclear scientists, most people who are into nonproliferation, that's the same crap that you've heard about global warming. 99.9% .9 of scientists agree man is destroying the earth. You've heard that, haven't you? Now they got the stooge, illegitimate pope coming. I may organize a protest against this Pope. I'll do it on the radio anyway. I'm not into the street anymore. I'll leave it to the rest of you to go in the street. It's unprecedented what's going on in the world right now under this gangster regime. They're literally caught lying one day after another about this deal with Iran. Let's keep it on the highest potential problem here. Putting a nuclear weapon in the hands of the mullahs who have said they will destroy Israel and they will then destroy the great Satan, which is the United States of America, is treason as far as I am concerned. And nothing happens. No consequences. No, no consequences to any of this? Now we're going to shift gears to something related to this. The other day, Huckabee, who I was never really impressed with, who I am now very impressed with, I think Huckabee is the best candidate next to Trump. And I say that because Trump can win, Huckabee can't win, but Huckabee is very intelligent and also extremely ethical. Great ethics, actually cares, and a great mind. Now, of course, pitted against Geraldo Rivera, it's hard to see that he has a great mind. I mean, I wouldn't say that uh, Huckabee against uh, Geraldo Rivera is a great contest of intellect. Rivera is not known for his intellect. But Huckabee made such mincemeat out of Jerry Riviera that you have to listen to this entire series of sound bites. It's going to take a little work. 
So let us try to begin with the statement that Huckabee made that the professional Jews took offense at. Let's listen to it. Uh, this president's foreign policy is the most speckless uh, in American history. Uh, he's so naive, he would trust the Iranians, and he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. This is the most hideous thing. This Iran deal should be rejected by both Democrats and Republicans in Congress and by the American people. We gave away the whole farm. It's, uh, it's got to be stopped. Okay. So all he said was is that this deal takes the Israelis and marches them to the door of the oven. So the professional Jews got offended. Yesterday I talked about the professional Jews at the American and the Anti-Defamation League, which as far as I'm concerned is, is a worthless organization. When I was banned by Britain, I wrote, I wrote to them. They didn't even answer me because there was nothing in it for them. No guilt for them in that one. Couldn't make any money off a little talk show host who got banned for nothing. So don't tell me that they're a legitimate organization. They're a lobbying group, period. So the ADL now is offended, are they? And who else is offended by it? All the reform rabbis are offended? Well, I'm offended by reform Judaism. It offends me to go into a reform temple and listen to what rubbish passes for, Ju for religion. I'm offended by them. So now they have the nerve to wheel out Jerry Riviera, who now runs with this, and Jerry Riviera has Huckabee on. You got to listen to the entire interchange, and you'll see what Riviera is really made of. You have Let's hear offended many, many people in the Jewish community. Not only the organized Jewish community, but the rank and file. It is it is inappropriate to compare the Holocaust to anything. And if you start using that as a sloppy rhetorical phrase, you you're 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 going to get in trouble and, and just why do we have the Holocaust Museum in Washington why do we have Yad Vashem in Jerusalem that I visited dozens and dozons of times but why do we have it? because they are sacred why, why do we have they're not to be no 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 ask, answer my question though Geraldo why to do we remember have to remember to why do we want forget. to remember to, to never, never forget. forget why so that we never repeat it again if we're on the verge of repeating it again with a nation that is threatening to do that very thing how do we not bring up that language so that was the end of Riviera's attempts at using reason. He's not known for reason. I mean, you know, we can go into all the jokes about Riviera, but we don't have to do that. The fact is, is that Huckabee showed him for what he is, a shallow mouthpiece. And he takes, I mean, uh, Huckabee takes the threat of Iran very seriously. And of course, leading the, the Israelis to the door of the oven is an apt phrase, because you see a nuclear weapon, Jerry, actually creates an oven-like heat. Did you know that, Jerry? Did you did you get any of that in uh, your Fox News green rooms, in your discussions with the leg crossers? A nuclear weapon, when it's exploded over a city, creates an intense heat that exceeds that of the ovens of Auschwitz. You didn't know that. So why would any Jew find that inappropriate? Why? Why would that be inappropriate to use? I don't quite get it. Anyone out there tell me why it's inappropriate? Are there any liberal reform Jews listening to the show who find it offensive that Huckabee would try to defend the Israeli people? What's offensive about that? Where's the offense? I think it's a legitimate question. I mean, Geraldo Rivera is not known for his keen intellect. I get that. But uh, this, this is beyond comprehension that he suddenly would say, you've offended many people in the Jewish community, but the rank and file? Listen to that phrase, rank and file. Rank and file, Mr. Elitist, who gave away troop movements in Iraq. Rank and file. Who listens to Fox News? Isn't it the rank and file, Jerry? Isn't it the rank and file that you count on? Rank and, the rank and vile? The rank and vile that you count on to boost your ratings? What do you mean it's inappropriate to compare the Holocaust to anything? Why? Who said so? Who owns it? Who owns the Holocaust? A friend of mine wrote me an email saying when he heard this, he said, of course the ADL is offended by it because they own, and he said this to me, now I'm quoting someone. He said, to them it's Holocaust Inc. It's the Holocaust Incorporated. They use it as a fundraising weapon, and only they're allowed to use a reference to the Holocaust. Everyone else, forget about it. You can't use it, he said to me. Holocaust Incorporated. It's a business to many of them. That's what he said to me. And he's a lawyer of Jewish descent, by the way. His mother ran from Hitler, fled Hitler, who now spends his entire life fighting 
class action lawyers. He's a lawyer who fights class action lawyers. He sent that to me. He said there's a group that he hates more than any in the courts. He calls them Holocaust Inc. He said they've raped Germany and they rape anyone they get their hands on using the dead people as their weapon. That's what he said. I don't know whether you agree with those harsh words. I realize it's a little harsh on this sunny summer day. It's a hot summer day and you want to be on vacation. But there are very serious things going on. I, I would have to, if I were to rank them all, number one in America is the flood of illegal aliens that Obama's dumping in our cities in order to change the demographics of America forever. Forever! And he's not being stopped, the maniac. Look at the demon's eyes. After doing everything he could to undermine this country, flees to Africa, and now he has the nerve to lecture them on gay rights and this right and that right, telling them what they should think about homosexuality. When it's ingrained in their culture, by the way, what they think. Lecturing Africa now. It's going to get worse by the day. So, here we are. Here we are. Lots of topics, and I haven't even touched the planned infanticide. If you ever saw that videotape of what she says and the picture of the babies being dissected, either you'd break into tears or you'd pick up a gun and uh, run with it and do some sh uh, target practice at your local shooting range. Because you're going to go to pieces if you see these women, these feminists, joking over sl while slugging wine in these fancy little uh, bistros, selling baby body parts. This is no longer about abortion. This is about Hitler. Hitler back in a skirt and lipstick. Hitler's back in a skirt and high heels. I'm running short of time. This is a very hard day for me because the news is so despicable, so nightmarish, the people are so asleep that those of us in the business of being the clarion callers of our society have a huge burden on us now. It's no longer just a rhetorical action. We're no longer at the point of just expressing opinions that are different from those of the government or of the government media complex. We are at a point of no return. If Iran gets the bomb, if the infanticide of Planned Parenthood is not stopped, if, 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 I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So Huckabee, to his credit, says that if Iran is allowed to get a nuclear weapon, which Obama has given them a basic pathway to, it will lead the Israeli people to the doors of the oven. Well, that set off a tremendous controversy amongst professional Jews who said no one has the right to use the word of the Holocaust. Bill on KSFO, go ahead, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. What's your opinion? My opinion is that my president made a great deal and saved Jews from the oven, Mr. Huckabee saying he's leading them to. Wait, wait, how do you know what the, wait a minute, how do you know what the deal is I know you're you're no you're all knowing. I'm sure that you're a lawyer who knows everything. Uh, how do you know what's in the deal if Kerry says he hasn't seen the deal himself? Iran would have had a bomb within a month. Wait, wait, no, 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 don't change the argument. You're not in the court of law where you own the judge. You're in the court of savage where you own your mind, and that's all you're going to use. You how do you know he gave a good deal when Kerry said he never saw it himself? Yeah, What's no. the matter? Cat got your tongue? Mr. Wise Guy? Michael, you Disappeared. Disappeared. Big mouth. Liberal Jewish supporter of Obama. He made a great deal. My president made a great deal. He saved the Jews. What is the deal, Mr. Wise Guy? You don't know? Kerry doesn't even know what's in it. He said he doesn't know what's in it. You're in the court of savage. You don't own the judge. You can't bribe the jury. You can't rig this system. You can't rig this system. It's the last bastion of free speech in the United States of America. Right here, right now, right where you're listening. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Many other Americans have Muslims in their families or have lived in a Muslim-majority country. I know because I am one of them. But my father came from a Kenyan family that includes generations of Muslims. As a boy, I spent several years in Indonesia and heard the call of the Azan at the break of dawn. So I have known Islam on three continents before coming to the region where it was first revealed. That experience guides my conviction. You, you are absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. As the Holy Quran tells us, the Holy Quran teaches that, the Holy Quran tells us, and the Holy Quran also says... Uh, this president's foreign policy is the most speckless uh, in American history. Uh, he's so naive, he would trust the Iranians, and he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. This is the most hideous thing. This Iran deal should be rejected by both Democrats and Republicans in Congress and by the American people. We gave away the whole farm. It's, uh, it's got to be stopped. Good for Huckabee. He's a serious candidate. He has ethics. He has intellect. He has reason. Welcome to Hour 2 of the Savage Nation. We're talking about Huckabee's fabulous remark, leading the Jewish people in Israel to the door of the oven. Now, let's put that in context for those of you who are the bagel and lox eaters. And I say that because there's a phrase... Uh, when I go to temple, I go to an Orthodox Jewish temple once a year, or I go to, I, I'll be very honest with you, uh, Christmas Eve, I go to a church. In that sense, I'm just into what I'm into. I'm just into what I'm into. But there's a whole group of liberal Jews who don't believe in God, but they go to the temple for social reasons. To them, the word God is a joke. It's a laugh line. And uh, <clears throat> they're the ones who support Obama. Most of the Orthodox Jews support the opposite of Obama. Iran is the only nation on earth that has said that when they get a bomb, they will use it to destroy another nation. They will commit genocide against the Jewish people. China's had the hydrogen bomb for as long as they've stolen the secrets from us. Russia had the nuclear bomb long after the Rosenbergs gave them the secrets to the uh, atomic bomb. See, we had the atomic bomb first. Then the Rosenberg slime stole the secrets and gave them to the Communist Party USA who ferried them, ferried them to, uh, to uh, Russia. Russia's had the bomb. They've never threatened to use it against another nation. Only Iran, the terrorist nation, has said when we get the bomb, we will use it against the Jewish people who wiped them off the planet. And here are the Jews celebrating the so-called deal that Kerry himself said he hasn't seen. But they've seen it. They know it's a great deal. Just as they know global warming is real. They don't know what the evidence is. They don't know how to read a scientific paper. They have no idea what global warming means, but they know that it's good to stop it because Obama said so. They're the puppets, just puppets. And, you know, a man once said the following, since we're talking about Jewish people right now. It's eaten me alive for 25 years since I heard it. His name was Irv Rubin. He was the uh, head of the Jewish Defense League. He wasn't a particularly brilliant guy, but he was a big guy and a, Old world type, a fighter. I remember he once went on a television show where there were skinheads and he beat them up. He picked up chairs, he broke them over, over their head and they ran off the stage. I mean, he was a big guy. Anyway, he was arrested for a false, on a false charge and he allegedly committed suicide in prison. It was another thing that I know is not true. A guy like that never commits suicide. They killed him. 
Why they killed him, why, I don't know. But Irv Rubin said something that I read years later when he said, I don't understand one thing about my people, meaning the Jewish people. They can be so brilliant in law, so brilliant in medicine, so brilliant in business, so brilliant in science, but complete idiots when it comes to their own survival. He said that, and I, it struck me. It struck me so hard. And here, it, here it's happening again. You got Jews calling the show saying, my president saved Israel from, a, from annihilation with this deal. It's a good deal. I said, really, what is the deal? Kerry just said he didn't even see the deal. He's never seen it himself. He doesn't know what's in the side deals. But he knew it. The, the caller knew what the deal was. He personally knew it. He got it in writing. He got a special telegram. Not even an email. He got a telegram with the deal. He knew the whole deal because he loves Obama so much. Here's a little piece of news for you. Play the breaking news sound for those of you. Uh... Here's some breaking news on the Savage Nation. Kerry skips over Israel, a Middle East trip. U.S. Secretary of Hate John Kerry is conveniently skipping over America's closest ally this week during a trip that will take him to Egypt, Gutter, Singapore, Malaysia, and Vietnam. The reason for skipping over Israel is obvious. The Obama administration has one objective right now to make sure that Congress does not reject the Obama nuke with a veto-proof majority. I'm calling it the Obama nuke. Isn't it ironic that the man who came to power saying he would end all wars and he would rid the earth of nuclear weapons is now giving Iran a nuclear weapon? Isn't that interesting, the hypocrisy? Of course, oh, look, I watched the show Homeland for years, so I'm not surprised by this. The longer this goes on, the more, I, the more I'm convinced that we have a double, a double operating here. It's a double. What do you need to see the rug and the fez? On television, then John Stewart would make a laugh line out of it. He'd call him in the White House. He'd tell him, look, I need you to make a joke over the fact that someone got a video of me on a rug praying to Mecca. So Stewart gets the marching orders and will go out and make it a joke that night for the stoners that listen to him. Why do you think I call guys like Stewart? and Bill Maher, government jesters. Why do I do this? I'm trying to have you understand how bad it really is. These stooges work for the government. I don't mean they're on the government payroll. Okay, you got the picture. What else do you want to talk about? Oh, God, the news is horrible. Okay, let's make it even worse. Let's make, I figure, look, if you're listening to this show now, and you're not enjoying yourself on this nice summer day, then you're sane. You're very sane, and you really do want to know what's going on. So let's go for it. Let's go for broke. Trump will be on the show tomorrow to talk about, I guess, whatever I want to talk about or whatever he wants to talk about. I'll figure out what I want to ask him later. I'm a go Trump go guy. I hope he's in it for the long haul, and I hope he runs, and I hope he wins. But aside from that, there's a story on my website that got me so enraged this morning. It showed the picture of the dentist from North Dakota, who, a Minnesota, say Minnesota, but he's from North Dakota, who killed Cecil the lion with a bow and arrow. Now, I'll repeat what I said yesterday. There's no punishment that I could think of more fitting for this man who did this to this beautiful, noble animal in a nature reserve than to release him naked into the woods and have people hunt him down with bows and arrows and do what he what was done to the lion. The lion was injured by his bow and arrow. And for days, the lion bled and kept the pain to himself because animals don't cry out when they're hurt. Animals don't cry when they're hurt. That's how they've survived the millennia. They don't call up a doctor for Obamacare the minute they have a pain in the knee. Oh, my knee hurts. You know, doc, I got a, a little pain in my back. How, I, you know, I felt something in my side. Can I get treatment? Can I get a medicine? We're the weakest species God has ever made. The weakest species being made weaker by this, this socialized medical system tells you to worry about every crank, every crank little weakness you have. Everyone's got a disability. Lion didn't cry out. It crawled for days in the, in the underbrush, bleeding to death from the arrow still stuck in him. And then this pig of a man, this dentist from North Dakota, this coward of cowards, then had him shot with a high-powered rifle, skinned the lion alive and cut his head off for a trophy in Zimbabwe, that fabulous nation. Wonderful nation, Rhodesia. Great nation. 
Zimbabwe, I can't say the same thing for. Walt Palmer left in one of his many trophies. Take a look at the picture from the Telegraph. I have it on michaelsavage.com. If you don't weep looking at the lion, the dead lion with his eyes closed, you're not made of human blood. There's no blood in your veins. If you don't agree with me that this man should be hunted down and tried to the full extent of the law, he should be thrown in prison, by the way. There's a, there's a law against this. Walter James Palmer, a dentist from Minnesota, is believed to have paid 35,000 pounds to shoot and kill the much-beloved lion with a bow and arrow. He was shot in Wangi National Park. Now, that's only part of the story. This lion was a very famous lion. He was known to visitors. He enjoyed human contact. He was, uh, he was lured out of the national park with bait by this piece of, piece of garbage, this hunter. He lured him out of the national park where they weren't allowed to hunt. And once this beautiful animal was out of the animal park, this low-life cowardly dentist shot him with a bow and arrow. And the animal suffered for days. Suffered for days, bled for days, and uh, found wounded by the hunters and shot dead with a, with a high-powered rifle. Then he was beheaded and skinned. See, animals cannot be killed within the confines of the park. After killing the animal and removing his head, these low-life vermin hunters removed his collar, the tracking collar. Now, there's a crime against this. There's a punishment. There's punishment for this of many years in prison. I believe the African nation of Zimbabwe should take this man in custody, charge him with poaching, because if you're a local and you kill an animal without a license, you get between two to five years in prison. This piece of garbage from River Bluff Dental office in Bloomington, Minnesota. River Bluff Dental Office is in Bloomington, Minnesota. This sadistic, low-life coward, the dentist, should be arrested in Zimbabwe, tried, and if he is found guilty, as he allegedly is, he should be thrown into a Zimbabwe prison and not released. He should live in that Zimbabwe prison. That would be punishment enough. He should live only amongst Africans in the Zimbabwe prison, and maybe they'll treat him the way he treated this lion. Now, we can go into a longer story here about hunting in general. I don't want to go there. But if you want to see the other animals he's killed, this low-life coward, go ahead and look on the uh, website. There he is with a nice uh, world-record white rhino killed by bow in South Africa. Poor, innocent, magnificent creature killed by the lowest of species ever invented by, ma by God, ever created by God or by accident, is the human being. You want me to get into the hatred for the human species? I can do that pretty good and pretty fast, but I'll avoid that. I don't want to make it generic. Let's stick to this low-life, cowardly, sadistic dentist who should have worked for Adolf Hitler. Father of two, huh? Father of two. What a nice father to have. What a wonderful, proud father that must be. What a great dentist this guy must be. Okay, there it is, Mr. Palmer with his dental clinic. There's Mr. Palmer with the leopard shot in Zimbabwe in 2010, another magnificent creature holding him up like he owns him. Maybe he can make a rug out of the skin and put it in his dental office. Maybe they like that up there in, the, in his town. Walter Palmer. The news is so awful. It's so sad. To shoot an animal like this, and it, it, it suffers, then it dies, then cut its head off? This has nothing to do with Obama. Cecil Lyons killer revealed as an American dentist. Police in Australia find the body of fair-haired girl in suitcase Sparking Madeleine McCann speculation. Satanic statue unveiled in Detroit. Oh, God, it's awful, man. It's black. It's just awful. No wonder, I mean, no wonder people turn off for the news. Technician details harvesting fetal parts are planned infanticide in latest video. U.S. bans some cilantro from Mexico after feces and toilet paper found in the fields. <laughs> Uh, cilantro on your salad, sir? Would you like black pepper? I never let them with the big pepper thing. Poison. The big, long pepper grind. You know what kind of poison that is? Like pepper? Take that pepper grinding. Planned Parenthood sponsors deny funding organization amid scandal. I love all the big sponsors that won't go on my show. They fund Planned Parenthood. Isn't that nice? The world upside down. They won't fall. Oh, I'm too controversial. No, don't put any ads on the, the Michael Savage show. We only fund infanticide. Coca-Cola, huh? Who else did they say are their uh, uh, supporters?
the ones that won't come on my show. Let's see. All the big shows, they won't come on my show. AT&T, Alcoa, American Express, Avon, Black & Decker, Circuit City, Citibank, Clorox, Coca-Cola, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Fidelity, Ford Motor, Gannett, James River Corp, Merkin Company, Microsoft, Motorola, Philip Morris, T. Rowe Price, Prudential, Safeco, Sun Microsystems, Sunoco, Vanguard Group, Verizon, Washington Post. Uh, apparently, the webpage has them as sponsors of uh, planned infanticide. But these clean, good American companies will not advertise on Michael Savage show because I'm too controversial. I guess because I don't kill helpless fetuses and sell the body parts. I'm too controversial for these companies. That's the world you live in. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. The world has never seen anything like this. A con man so silk smooth that he could sell the death of a nation as the salvation of a nation. A man so silk smooth that he can sell himself as a Christian when over and over again he has boasted about his Muslim heritage. A man so silk smooth that he could lie about anything and never be called a liar because he owns the government jesters. He owns the street thugs. He owns the courts. There's a very dangerous situation now. Now it's escalated up to the international level where he is about to give a terrorist nation a pathway to a nuclear weapon or 10 while saying he's preventing them from developing a nuclear weapon when everyone can see that it's the opposite. Anyone who wants to analyze it can see it's the opposite. Get it? Okay, 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 I get it. You don't care. Time for a meatball recipe? Is that what you like? A little Teddy story? I can't, I'm not in the mood today. Teddy's a, my movie star. When all things go bad, I get on the floor with him and look in his eyes, which is why I care about lions being skinned alive by cowardly dentists from America. Animal rights. Yeah, I'm an animal rights activist. How's that? And I'm proud of it. I'm also a fetal rights activist. How do you feel about that? Fetal rights? Why, it's just tissue, isn't it? Hitler? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, so the controversy of the day du jour is uh, Obama saying I could win if I ran for a third term and Huckabee saying that the deal with Iran giving them a nuclear weapon uh, basically leads the Jewish people of Israel to the doors of the oven. And right away, the professional Jewish organizations who think they own the Holocaust are screaming, how dare you use the Holocaust? You can't use the Holocaust. Only we could use the Holocaust. Don't use the Holocaust. You have no right to declare the Holocaust. Why not? So Huckabee uh, goes back to the Holocaust Museum visits, Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, and he entraps uh, with a logical trap a, a, a talk show host or whatever, not really known for his keen intellect, Jerry Rivera, Rivera and uh, the rest is history. And Obama's lobbying around the clock to make sure that this is pushed through. Why, why would Obama care so much that this deal gets pushed through? Do you think he cares about Israel? What do you think is because he cares about Iran? I mean, ask yourself, why is he working so hard to push this down the throats of, the, of Congress? Is it because he has Israel's interests at heart? Or is it because he has Iran's interests at heart? Think about it. Use, use, your, use your logic for a minute. WABC, Chris, go ahead, fire away, you're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody about the contradiction. And, you know, uh, with the, if the Holocaust is to Jews, to what slavery is to the blacks, what about Biden? Last, last Two years ago, the Republicans are going to put you back in chains. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear any screams about that, frankly. 
Where, where's that? Where's the contradiction for that? I don't know, Chris. I didn't hear any controversy about that one. I guess because Democrats can say anything they want. And there's never a controversy. All right, I have 12 copies now of Countdown to Mecca, my summer reading novel. You get one of the 12. Thanks, and stay on the line. Wayne, K. Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Eugene. Green Oregon, you Green Oregon. K. U. Green Oregon. Wayne, welcome to the Savage Nation. What is the topic and what is your comment, please? Well, Michael, uh, we're on the same page. I, I really admire you on just about everything, but uh, but hunting. Uh, let's let's talk hunting for a second. Uh, you know, and I'm not I'm not I'm not real versed on the whole lion issue and what went on there. But you know, just straight up, you know, I got to ask you a question: Are you a complete vegetarian, 100 percent? Don't own any leather products, and we're, is 100 percent against. I, know, I, I but don't compare a lion as noble as this, which was required. The lion, by the way, was protecting its pride with another male lion. Now that this lion is gone, all of the children lion are about to be killed off by another lion. So it's a loss that is magnified by this hunt. So it's not not to do with eating cow. It's not exactly the same thing, Wayne. Well, well Michael, you're spinning it though, because basically, I mean, what do you mean I'm spinning it? What, what, what kind of spin is that? This lion was in a natural preserve. What are you talking about? And he and another male lion protected a female and her cubs. And now that the uh, single male lion is left, this single male lion will not be, a, uh, be able to protect the pride from another lion who will come in and kill these uh, baby lions. So uh, what, what am I spinning? What part of that am I spinning? Well, basically, you're not answering my question, for one. Number two... Well, I'm not on trial. You are. You're on trial trying to defend an, an indefensible act of slaughtering a magnificent creature that was in a nature preserve protected from poachers. Professional to make sure that that kind of thing didn't happen. He's from the United States. He's not a local down there. He doesn't know what's going on. This, this PH charged him a tremendous amount of money to show up to be a professional really oh really and they bait oh really he didn't know where the national park was that's why he didn't hunt them in the national park and they baited him with food out of the national park and then shot him with a bow and arrow outside the national park and this dentist didn't know that how could he know that he paid that professional he doesn't even probably know that park existed there they're outside of the park. oh really and the professional didn't say to him we're going to use bait to with to get the animal to come out of the park. What are you telling me he's using the bait for? Is it illegal? Is it illegal to use bait in Zimbabwe? That's the government's issue. If, well, if I don't. I don't know why you're defending an act as cowardly as this. I really don't understand this, because this animal was a beloved animal, well known to visitors, tourists, conservationists, a revered animal. Cecil was a well known animal. Why would you defend slaughtering such a creature? Cow in every pasture. You don't understand. And you're, com wait, and you're comparing a cow to this lion? Michael, you don't understand the way it works. It works because hunters are conservationists. They're the ones that rise up and say, stop the killing. Oh, bull crap. You're all a bunch of cowards. You're not the brave men you think you are. You got high-powered rifles. You can shoot an animal from a mile away. You're not so brave. Don't give me that crap that you're all brave, you hunters. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. You kill defenseless creatures because you sadistic bastards, all of you. There. Don't listen to my show anymore. Go listen to NPR. I am so sick and tired of conservatives on radio kissing the behind of hunters. Oh, yeah, Mr. Hunter, yeah. I'm, all these guys, all these talk radio hosts, they don't fire a gun themselves, but they make believe they love a hunter for fear they'll lose a demographic. Take your rifle and shove it up. Oh, The demographic, the hunter demographic. I just blew off the hunter demographic. Hunting poor innocent creatures with every technological advantage known to mankind. Every technological advantage known to mankind. Tricking these poor innocent beasts. Tricking them and just slaughtering them for what? For fun? Hunting for sport? Man is the only animal that hunts for sport that I know of. Maybe there's some sick creatures that God made that do the same thing. That like to torture things. And don't compare the lion to a cow. It's, it's, it's not an apt analogy. All right, let's get back to the big story. Let's get back to the big story. 
We have to play it again, Sam. Huckabee um, showed that he's a man of ethics and reason. Again, in an argument with Geraldo, it doesn't prove that he has a keen intellect. I get that. Jerry Riviera has not been known for his keen intellect along the years, showing away troop movements uh, in Iraq. I mean, things like that. Uh, Al Capone's vault. Didn't he recently go somewhere to find something? And then where did he just go? He, he, oh, he went to find El Chapo's tunnel. Uh, how'd that story go for him? The ratings went up, what, one-tenth of a zero percent? That was a brilliant, that was a brilliant decision to go. I guess he needed a vacation in Mexico. Then El Chapo's tunnel. You hear this? Uh, that was a big story. No one looked at that one. So, I mean, arguing with him uh, does, doesn't raise your IQ. You quote what people think you're that smart. But Huckabee put him into a corner. He couldn't get out of it. Listen to the interchange between uh, Jerry Riviera and Mike Huckabee in clip three. You have offended many, many people in the Jewish community, not only the organized Jewish community, but the rank and file. It is, it is inappropriate <laughs> to compare the Holocaust to anything. And if Why, you start Jerry? using that as a sloppy rhetorical phrase, you, you're, you're, you're going to get in trouble. And, and Why do we have the Holocaust Museum in Washington? Oh Why do we have Yad Vashem in Jerusalem that I visited dozens and dozons of times? But Why particularly do we have it? because they are sacred. Why, Why do we have They're it? not to be No, no, no. Ask, answer my question, though, Geraldo. Why to do we remember. have it? To remember. To Why do we want forget. to remember? To, to never, never forget. forget. Why? So that we never repeat it again. If we're on the verge of repeating it again with a nation that is threatening to do that very thing, how do we not bring up that language? No, that was the end of the road for Riviera. And he answered like a child, to remember, to remember, to never forget. He piped in, he chimed in. And then Huckabee, the teacher, taught him what it's all about, that these museums are for people to remember that it shouldn't happen again, that's all. And he takes the threat of Iran very seriously because the Iranians said that they will wipe the Jewish people off the planet, starting with Israel, and then they'll come for the great Satan, America. So anyway, that's not that big a story, I guess, to most people, nor the baby body parts. That doesn't really matter. Nah. What was on Ray Donovan? Maybe that's more important. Or What was that other show? Oh, they stink. I'm not impressed. I can't take the, the television shows anymore. I'm, I'm TV'd out. My Sunday nights sitting in the dark room watching them are over. I got a kick out of them for three or four weeks, no more. I'm sick of Ray Donovan. I'm, I can't take that. I don't like the uh, True Detective anymore. Maybe I need a vacation. N'importe où des de monde, for those of you who speak French, anywhere out of this world. Immigration surge continues, 30,000 expected. UN demands empathy over enforcement. They demand empathy to flood us with third worlders? The flotsam and jetsam of the third world we're supposed to sit here and welcome with open arms? Why is this happening to us? And who's aiding and abetting the surge of illegal aliens into America? Yesterday, I tried to tell you what it's all about. Follow the money. It's not about humanitarianism. It's about money. Fortunes are being made. Smuggling them in, that we know. And we hear that that's done by criminal organizations smuggle them in. Oh, that's bad. But how about the criminal organizations disguised as charities who make fortunes per head Housing them, clothing them, feeding them, trying to educate them, whatever. Giving them video games, getting them phones. Who do you think's taking the skim off those deals? Well, they have names. Look them up. Take a look at which religious charities, so-called, are in the business, in this criminal business of, of aiding and abetting illegal immigration. And you'll understand why it's going on. It's a gigantic criminal organization under many umbrella groups with uh, fronts, charity fronts, that are making fortunes off the immigration racket. That's all. What else can I say to you? All right, let's go on. Yay, great show. Great show, Mike. Glad you got yourself depressed and sick. You know, I just had a pretty crazy moment during the break. I don't know if I should even tell you about it. Maybe I'm, I'm starting to blow it. I can't take this anymore, to be honest with you. Obama is so evil. The people are so dumb that I don't know if I can do this much longer. It's so clear right in front of our eyes that he's giving them a pathway to a nuclear weapon, a terrorist nation. And his own stupid idiot, Secretary of Hate, Kerry, says he didn't even see the deal. Never saw it. Never saw the secret side deals. Doesn't know what's in them. And, and none of the Jewish big mouths 
are saying a word. The normal Jewish big mouths like Schumer from New York is not saying a word. Wasserwurman Schultz, the, fish, the fishmonger from Florida, not a word. Not a word. Where'd they all go? What's wrong with these people? Well, what's wrong with these people? And I, I was standing in the radio kitchen during the break, scoffing down my radio lunch in between the break. Whatever it was, who knows what it was. Giving up on the bad Chinese food, which I hate, on a new diet for a change. And I heard my father's voice again. I've, heard the, I've not heard this in over 30 years. And I, I don't know whether it's realistic or I'm going crazy altogether. Remember I told you that I thought of moving to Israel in 1979, I think it was. I had two very young children. I had a nine-year-old and a two-year-old, and I wanted out of America for a number of reasons at the time. I, I don't even want to go into the reasons. Well, I'll give you the exact reason, because of the racism against white males. Although I had a PhD from one of the great universities, and I've written many books, they wouldn't hire me. They were hiring only uh, unqualified women and unqualified minorities at the time. And I was offered a position at Hebrew University in Jerusalem for two years from one of the greatest research scientists in the world in the field of natural products. So I went over there to check it out with the family. And one of the nights I was walking around the streets of, Jer of Jerusalem, I think, or a Tel Aviv, actually I think it was Tel Aviv, alone late at night. I went out drinking in one of the bars and I heard my father talk to me as I walked on the cobblestone streets and he had been dead 10 years, nine years. And I heard him say to me, I was an immigrant to America. Why do you want to make your children an immigrant to another country? I went home the next day. That was the end of it. I realized I would have hobbled my children's future for my idealism. So I ended it because that's, that's what children do for you. They make you think about, you know, them. And once you, once you think about your children, you can make more rational decisions. People without children can't make the same decisions as those with children, by the way. And people who kill children, the unborn, are subhumans as far as I'm concerned. But I don't want to go into that to that area. So I'm standing in the kitchen not, 10 minutes ago. And again, I don't know what it was. I was eating a papaya after eating some, some chicken. I heard my father talk to me again. I haven't heard this in years. And he said to me, Michael, why are you killing yourself like this? Why are you killing yourself? It's over. The man is a devil. He is destroying America and the world. Don't destroy yourself over this. And I had, to I had to grab the counter. I said, oh, God, not this again. Now, I understand some would say it's like a psychotic episode. It wasn't a psychotic episode. And it really was me thinking what my father would say to me. Probably. I mean, that's how you put things like that in context, if you want to be your own psychiatrist. I didn't have a psychotic break in the kitchen. I just know as sure as I'm standing here that we have an enemy who is out to destroy this country and remake the world in his own sick, twisted image. And on that little note, I'll take a little break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. Now, those uh, bootlickers who support Obama at all costs, no matter what he does, including the Iran deal, will call and say that the Israeli envoy says Huckabee words in the Iran deal are inappropriate that came out in the USA Today. But you have to read the whole statement. Ambassador Ron Derma of Israel, who is lobbying against the Iran deal, said that the harsh language the Republican president and Mike Huckabee used uh, was inappropriate. So what? Here's what he actually said. On Huckabee's comments, the Israeli ambassador said these exact words. He said, these are not words that I would use or that I think are appropriate. Now, right away, the left-wing newspapers jumped on it and said that what Huckabee said was inappropriate. That's not what he said. He said something different. He said, these are not words that I would use or that I think are appropriate. Well, good for you, Derma. You're, you're nothing but a, a, an ambassador. Your job is to, is to spin things. You're not known for truth. What's an ambassador known for? John Kerry is a glorified ambassador. They're professional liars. They know how to make a tie and wear a suit, that's all. What does it make him, God? And he doesn't live in America. 
And he's not an American. So I don't care what Derma says. To me, he's just Stuff Derma. Ambassador Ron Derma is no smarter than Stuff Derma that I hate as a child. Go, Huckabee, go. Go, Huckabee, go. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. All right, we're talking about Obama's uh, giveaway of the atomic bomb to uh, the terrorist state of Iran, him saying he could win a third term, but the Constitution limits the third term. We're talking about Huckabee standing up for Israel. Uh, we're talking about, I didn't talk about this yet, which is that in an attempt to placate Israel, Obama is going to release the Israeli spy Pollard. Pollard. Granted, parole will be released in November, which I think is, you know, more of the cynicism of this evil administration. Why couldn't they release him six months ago if he, if he posed no threat? So they were holding Pollard as a, as a hostage. Obama was using Pollard as a hostage. That's what this proves, that this evil dictator in the White House is so low that he would use this guy as a hostage and throw the hostage back without even asking that Iran return the four hostages. You hear this? I mean, think about how evil this is. Okay, I don't think you want to hear this. Then Kerry says that Iran may use the deal to gain weaponry and money and buy weapons to kill Americans and Israelis, but so what? So he needs a Nobel Prize, I guess, to put next to the other awards that Heinz Kerry has in the kitchen. Secretary of Hate John Kerry said on Capitol Hill just today that Iran may kill Americans or Israelis. One question. A member of Congress asked the Secretary of Hate, well, do you believe that Iran is the world's foremost sponsor of terrorism? Yes, said Ketchup. And that they will use the conventional weapons made available by the Iran nuclear treaty to kill Americans or Israelis. Well, they may, said Ketchup. They may, and we have, as you know, responded to that from 1979. What? Unbelievable. That's unbelievable to me, and yet they're going ahead with the deal. There should be no deal. Say, no, look, we thought about it there, scum. They're the scum of the earth. They changed everything. Now they want to give us the dirt that we're supposed to analyze. They changed it today. Iran changed the deal today. They said, now, now we're going to supply the soil that you analyze. You hear this? We'll, we'll give it to you in a jar. You can't send inspectors. So you walk away from a deal like this and you fire up the B2. You fire up the B1s and you get them humming. That's all. You get them humming and you get them in the air. And you give Iran 24 hours to stand down from what you want them to do. Turn over all of the centrifuges and you get those bees in the air and you get them buzzing over that hornet's nest. What a nation we become. What good is a military as powerful as this when you have a, well, fill in the blank at the top. What good is a military when you have a man like this at the top of it? What good is a military if you don't know how to use it and won't use it? What's the military for? What's the military for? To build houses in Haiti after an earthquake? What is a military for? Tell me what it's for. What is the world's most powerful military for if not to stop a terrorist nation from dragging us over the coals in a deal like this and saying, we'll do what we want, we'll develop a weapon, and then you know what? Catch us if you can. What if, what if, what if? Israeli spy Pollard granted parole. I think they should have given him a life sentence. I'm really harsh on, on spies. I don't care who they are. Jonathan Pollard? Why should he be released at all? I don't understand. Why should he be released? He's been serving a life sentence in a U.S. prison since 1987. What did he do? I mean, what did he do? Why are they releasing him all of a sudden? Because it's, it's an attempt to placate Israel. Had Paula's parole been denied, he would have been required to serve an additional 15 years in prison. 
He'd been serving a sentence of life in prison for conspiracy to deliver classified info to the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm, Look into that one. Mm, He better not go jogging in Marcy Park during his parole. That's all I could say. I don't think he can even go to Israel. Uh, Well, let's leave that one alone. This is a crazy story. But he was held as a hostage by the Obama administration, and he just released the hostage in an attempt to negotiate with Israel. Of course, he didn't ask Iran to release any hostages, any Americans, because Americans don't matter to him. That's all. Abortion provided threatens local TV stations. That's planned infanticide. John Stewart's secret White House visits. John Stewart, as I said, is a government, a uh, a government jester. He the government owns him. Doesn't mean they pay him directly, indirectly. Trump's on the show tomorrow. Hope I can make it, and I'll be here. I got to be here for that one. Got to be here. I got to be here tomorrow for sure. Okay, let's have some music. I need some music. My mind is blown from all of this this pressure here. N'importe où de os du monde. Where where can we run from this world? How can we get away from this evil, sick world? Hunting a lion like that, skinning it alive and cutting off its head. That cowardly dentist. That sick little coward with his bow and arrow. Hunting a little a lion like that. I was watching a boxing match last night. I got relief from it. It was uh, Russian. Kovalov, he was fighting. It's very funny. It was very symbolic. It was a Russian fighting a Muslim by the name of Mohammed. And uh, the Russian broke Mohammed's nose. Mohammed was tough, by the way. He bobbed. He, he, we, he was a tough, big guy. But the Russian broke his nose. I thought there was a metaphor there. I don't know. Where are these Russian? How did these, how did these Russians get so tough? Where do they, what's in their DNA, what? It's from their fathers fought in Stalingrad, their grandfathers, rather? They ate sawdust as youth? Why are they so strong? Where do all these Russian fighters come out of the Ukraine? How'd they become so st- st- Where do they come from? If there's no American white guys who can win in a ring anymore. No, no, think about it. You talk about race and boxing, because it's a very big part of boxing, by the way. I know when I was a kid, they used to pitch one, pit one race against another to build up the audience or a, a religion against another religion. It was a, an Italian versus an Irishman. For about two years, there were tough Jews who fought in the ring. Then there, was, then there were no white men left. Then, uh, then recently, this is very hard. I mean, you know, now, all of a sudden, come these white guys out of Russia, jaw-breaking white men. Where did they come from? What do they eat? What's their diet? What's their gene structure? And he was, he's known as the meanest fighter in the business, Kovalov. He projects hatred. He likes to hurt the other man. I thought that was very interesting, the commentators on the, on the fighter, on the, on the boxing match. Kovalov is as mean in the ring as he is outside the ring. He hates the opponents, and he likes to hurt them. It was almost refreshing because I thought that's what fighting was all about. I don't know. Look, it was just an interesting fight. And I was quite surprised. Good Muhammad was. He really was. But he gave him a left. He busted his nose. It was, I mean, I winced when I saw the blow. I felt bad for Muhammad. The guy winced with pain. I mean, he busted up the orbit over the eye and the nose. And it was like, a, it was, must have been like a baseball bat coming out of the air, hitting him in the head. How can you enjoy watching a thing like that? I winced. I didn't like it. I felt bad for Muhammad, to be honest with you. I didn't sit cheering, oh, because he's got a name Muhammad, I'd like to see him lose. I didn't. One man against another, they're both strong, noble men to even fight like that. Speaking of fighting, why are we not fighting Iran? Why are we giving in to Iran? It's the U.S. versus Iran, and we're nothing. The floor is being wiped with us. Why are they wiping the floor with the United States of America? Why are we letting this happen? Why are we letting those mullahs do this to us when we know they're all terrorists? They say they are. And where's the Jewish community on this? Where's the, why are the Jews not speaking out against this? I know there were 10,000 in the streets of, of Manhattan last week, but it didn't make it to the local newspaper. But if four illegal aliens screamed about the, the Dreamers, they would have the cameras uh, inside their undershirts. If, if four, four Hispanics were in the street from Guatemala screaming about Dreamers, the media would have been, would they had the cameras inside their undershirts, making the crowd look like four million. But there were 10,000 in New York saying no deal with Iran. Either they didn't cover it at all, 
Or they made it look like four people. They did a close-up of four people with poster signs. I guess Geraldo missed that when he was out in the Hamptons for the weekend. He didn't see the crowd. They don't count. And Schumer, where's Schumer now? What's he negotiating? Bruce on WABC Radio, go ahead, please. Make my day. What's on your mind? Yes, I will make your day, Dr. Savage. First of all, I want you to know that I've been listening to you, and I feel the same way you do. I feel alienated from this country, which I love very dearly. I was in the military from 78 to 83. But besides that, I've called because the one positive thing, because I feel the same way you do, is that I feel that what's happening, there's nothing we can do. Kerry is a waste. Even uh, my, who I thought was a great senator, Senator Charles Schumer, is going to sell us out. Yes. And I think Schumer is, neg Schumer is just negotiating with Obama to see what he can get out of the deal before he throws Israel to the wolves. Exactly. And you know what's going to happen? You know what the bottom line is that's going to go on? The only people that are going to save us is the Mossad and the Israelis. Yeah, well, what, what are they waiting for? The world. If you don't well, think... Wait, 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 wait. What are they waiting for? Because there's nothing... got to wait till this is blown up. If they go in now, then they look like, oh, those Israelis, they're just they're, they're hateful people. They've got to wait till this gets settled until the Iranians really... I mean, you know about the Russian scientists that have been knocked off to slow down the Iranian, okay, uh, nuclear... Uh, capacity. Well, I know about this. I mean, we all know the Stuxnet virus was created in Israel. At least we think so. You know, it was a cyber, it was a cyber war that they were conducting. You actually believe in your heart of hearts Israel still has the guts to attack Iran? Oh, I, I definitely think so, and that's why they're not yelling so much. Remember, Israelis are a special people. Okay? I'm sorry, Bruce. Bruce, you just broke up. See if we can hear you again. Fire away. You think Israel has the guts to attack Iran? Not a but Broken up. That's live radio for you. It's not canned. I'm not John Stewart with a, a laugh a thon. All right, cut that. Let's come back again. Let me I, I don't like the way I look. Let me see the camera. No, I don't like that angle. Take that back. Re re cut that out. We don't have that leisure here on talk radio. We just do it. I don't think Israel has the guts to attack Iran. I think that's that's a that's a non starter. It's not gonna happen. It's not the Israel someone asked me that last week. I said, forget about it. You say Israel, you're thinking of Golda Meir, an American woman who had guts. Moshe Diane. They're not Moshe Diane and, and, and Golda Meir anymore. They're gone. They're gone. They've traveled back and forth to, to Paris, to America. What Israel? What Israel are you talking about? Which Israel? Where is the Israel you're talking about? What Israel? What Israel? It's an appendage of the United States. That's all it is. What part of it is Israel? What part of it makes it so special anymore? I once, oh, I don't want to go into this whole story about Israel right now because, you know, it's not even Israel that's the question. Of course I want Israel to survive. Of course it's the most decent nation in the Middle East, surrounded by the lowest of the low. I always ask liberals when I used to get into an argument, when I even bother getting into arguments with them, I said, you know, you hate Israel and you love the Arabs so much. Let me ask you a question. If you had a choice to land in any nation in the Middle East without a passport, would you choose from the following, please? Egypt, Israel, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, which one would you choose to land in without a passport? That was the end of the discussion. All of a sudden, the liberals shut their mouths, put the tail between their legs, and scurried off to a Chardonnay, a Chardonnay dinner. So I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think Israel's going to do anything. I think they're going to talk and talk and talk and do nothing. I don't think they have the wherewithal, nor do I think that they have the military ability to really damage the Iranian uh, nuclear reactors, truthfully. But what I've read... How deeply underground? How are they going to get to an underground nuclear facility dug into the, the bowels of a mountain? How can they do that? Tell me how they can do that. It's impossible. Right, they can slow it down, but they're not going to, I don't think they're going to derail it completely, as far as I can tell. I think what we need to do is liberate the Iranian people. See, this is the real bad part of this whole deal. You know, there's an Iranian opposition movement, and there has been for years, and Obama has dismissed them. 
instead of supporting the Iranian opposition that opposes the religious fanatics who have stolen Iran from the Iranian people, who are a great people, by the way. Never forget how great the Persian people really are. Never forget that. Never forget how advanced that civilization was until these throwback mullahs stole the nation from them. You must never forget that. And Obama has not helped the opposition, has he? He's undermined the opposition. And by giving, removing the sanctions, you're going to free the terrorist mullahs to persecute all the opponents of that despotic, autocratic, religious regime. Do you understand that? I got to take a quick one. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You're listening to the Savage Nation. We're talking about Obama's giving Iran a pathway to nuclear weapons and the consequences for the United States of America. Forget Israel for a minute. Let's say you don't really care about Israel. Do you really want a terrorist to have a nuclear weapon? Do you want terrorists in headscarves wrapped in a religious revival to have nuclear weapons? Is that what you want? Are you people crazy? Why is Obama bending over backwards to give them a weapon? Why? What if you woke up tomorrow morning and you saw that uh, Israel or a coalition of Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia had attacked Iran and wiped out 90% of their capacity to develop nuclear weapons, and areas were shown smoking around the country. Do you know that that would free the world for 25 or 30 years from the threat of a, a rogue nation like Iran having a nuclear weapon? Do you understand that that's what, what militaries are developed for, is to protect the population from enemies? What in the heck is wrong with you? Just because you have a weakling, psychotic, anti-American in the White House doesn't mean that the rest of us are crazy. Okay, Greg on KSFO, what's your opinion? Go ahead, please. Michael, it could be one of two things. Either A, Obama and our government is being held <clears throat> with a gun to our head saying, look, give us what we want, or guess what? The, uh, the Tet Offensive of 1968, we're going to unleash 40,000 Shia Hezbollah on your country, and the streets of America will be on fire running with blood. Or B, via the southern border, there could be multiple nuclear weapons, suitcase weapons, in numerous cities. And they're being blackmailed, just like, just like Boehner is being blackmailed, just like the Gobbler is being blackmailed. Do you actually think that Iran has that many agents at its disposal right here in the United States? Yes. Interesting. I don't. I don't. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Is it me or is the world as bad as I think it is? Sometimes I wonder if I'm nuts. I look at idiot men walking around shorts, a barbecue, a golf club. It's enough for them. Not, they don't know Iran. They don't know this. The nothing bothers them. They march around like there's nothing, nothing wrong in the world, nothing. Well, here comes a study now from another crackpot university professor. Poverty is a medical condition. Washington, CBS. Children who grow up impoverished may suffer negative physiological effects, according to new research. Research published in the Journal of the American Muddled Association used brain scans from hundreds of children and found that those from poor households were impacted mentally. The research showed that poor children have less gray matter in an area of the brain associated with learning compared to kids from wealthier households. Get it? See the warfare, the class warfare? And who did the study? Seth Pollack, a professor of psychology. Uh, that's an oxymoron to begin with. A professor of psychology, Seth Pollack, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's the co-author of the study. So a left-wing red diaper dopa baby does a, a crazed study that has no reason attached to it at all. And he says that it was really when we started getting down into real poverty, real abject poverty, that we started seeing a difference. 
Then they go on the crackpots. Children, households, and annual income below 24000 for a family of four had 7-10% to less gray matter volume than what is considered standard for healthy development. And then uh, the Seth the Genius notes that the children from poor households are getting too little of the things we need to develop the brain. You mean like bad parents? Idiot. Could it be, Seth, that, let's put it to you this way, a nice way that won't offend your liberal sensibilities. I mean, your propaganda is so sickening. Dumb people tend to have less gray matter and their children have less gray matter than other children. Seth, is that sort of what you're saying? Maybe they inherited it from their parents, idiot. Or that dumb people who cannot earn a, live, a decent living have dumb babies. I guess it's all about the evil rich white people who uh, unfortunately take care of their children and read to them who, who are at fault. That's the problem. And wonder if these brain mass studies by the genius Seth, uh, whatever, included the working poor or just the government dependent, someone asked. The working poor or just the government dependent? Because that, that affects brain matter. If you only have to collect the government check, I would think your brain doesn't get stimulated enough to produce gray matter. But if you're actually poor and working, I would say that your brain matter would be larger. So now there's no personal responsibility for anyone anymore. Someone writes, hormonal leftist hand wringers and their corrupt nanny state politicians can now rejoice. Now the government can take the children away from their parents and raise them to be perfect Obama subjects. Or someone wrote this, it has been said, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Another one writes, probably true of children raised by single mothers with, mu with multiple paramours producing a variety of half relationships. And finally, an intelligent writer says, so when the kids were born, when they were born, was their gray, gray matter surveyed then, compared then to better off kids, and tracked yearly with comparisons to arrive at these conclusions? No. They simply measured poor kids and then made the assumption that they should have had equal amounts of gray matter to those more fortunate were it not for poverty. This is a Marxism. This is an example of what you get when you put idiots like this into a, a, a psychology department. What a world we're living in. Seth Pollock. Does he have parents anywhere? They're proud of the professor of psychology they produced? It was really when we started getting down into real poverty, real abject poverty, that we started seeing a difference, said Seth Pollock of the University of Wisconsin at Madison. That should say everything. University of Wisconsin at Madison says it all. Lysenko, Lysenko, read Lysenko. Okay, let's go back to the big, the big uh, story here. Big story, big story, big story. The big story. Cecil the Lion's Killer, the American dentist. Cecil the Lion's Killer. Man stabs passenger on New York City subway in dispute over seat. Homeless smashes Chinese tourist in the head with a two by four in Manhattan. Bums attacking people all over the streets of New York. This is what the communism brings. They should bring back Gi Giuliani. Giuliani. Giuliani, Giuliani. Oh, I was watching American Greed last night about that guy, the, the shyster who got caught. Jeb Bush was a big supporter of his. He was in many uh, segments of it. Oh, yeah, a good friend of it. What so was Obama, though, to be honest. And to be fair to this, I think Clinton's was seen with him. I love when they get caught, they give the money back. When the guy gets caught, caught the crook, they send back the donation. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know him. I almost saw him. I don't know him. I rubbed elbows or something on an Africa trip once. I saw him in a bathroom. He talked to me. I took a half a million dollars for a speech. When I said hello, he sent me a half a million dollars for saying hello. Because I normally get five million dollars for a speech. But since I said hello, he broke it down by the word. He gave me $500,000 for the... I don't really know him. I never met him. We don't have the tuna fish thing, a Jackie Mason tuna line. We've been looking for it. You have to pay for it. I'm not going to pay for it. I don't want to pay for that. And here we are, Moscow, Moscow on the Hudson. Moscow on the Hudson. Hillary takes private jet after launching climate plan. Oh, why did I call them uh, Gulfstream liberals? Remember you heard limousine liberals? I wrote Gulfstream liberals in 05. I don't have to be a genius to figure that. You know, here's a sort of this on the Drudge Report the other day. Boehner cries during Golf Channel interview. I, I meant to talk about that. This guy got to be med. He's meded out. He's on meds. That explains most of them. I wish there was a way to re require drug testing for politicians to see what's in their system. Boehner gets emotional at Golf Channel interview. What a maniac. 
I wanted to make sure that every kid had the same chance I did, an opportunity, Boehner with tears filling his eyes, says in a promotional spot for the Golf Channel show. Another clip from the program shows Boehner telling the host about a photo of him and some companions that sits in an office saying, quote, the three of us are talking about how easily we turn to tears. We have girly men running the Republican Party. What are they eating, chicken feet on the gobbler's farm? What is this? This is medication. Men who cry as easily as they're, medi they're medicated. That's medication. That's, that's medication. There's no question in my mind. That's, I'm guessing. No one cries like that unless they're on meds. I really want to make a leap here, but I'm afraid to do it. Even I have my limits. But I've said for years, I believe, look, if you work for a corporation, you have to pee in a cup. Don't they give you a drug, t a drug test to make sure you're not a drug addict or a druggie, right? At least they see what you know. They can control your brain, what's in the head. Why can't we require drug testing for every member of Congress as part of, you know, they run, oh, it's medical privacy. I get it. How many of them are whacked out on, on uh, antipsychotic medication? which explains why they do what they do. And could it be that an unvarnished truth teller like Trump is the only candidate not on drugs? I've been thinking about that. Because people who are not drugged tend to speak the way he does and the way I do. People who are not medicated tend to speak the truth. That's why you love the show. You can tell it that there's no varnish on this, on this board. This is a board. Okay, it's not a cheese board. You, you hear what I just said to you? People who are medicated are modulated. Let's put it to you that way. If you're medicated, you're modulated. Medicated, modulated. Medicated, modulated. Medicated, you're modulated. They take your highs and your lows, and they make it a fl like a flat line, like a dead person. So you never say anything controversial. And anyone who says anything controversial is just so shocking. It's so upsetting. It's so upsetting with the pink shorts on the way to the golf course. To have anything so shocking. So that means Huckabee's not on meds. That's what it means. That's that's what it explains. It could be one way I'm looking at it. I don't know. I don't know what explains it. But a guy who cries like that, a weeper, how powerful is he? Was he third in line for the for the for the nuclear football? The weeper? Can you imagine this country? How weak we are in the world's eyes? What an embarrassment. Can you imagine what we look like to a guy like Putin? Can you imagine what we look like to the mullahs of Iran? Okay, let's take some calls. Obama again. Whatever you do, whichever way you turn, it comes back to uh, to this doll in the White House. Let's go to New York City, WABC on the Savage Nation. Martin, fire away. You're being listened to by millions. Hi, um, I have a theory about what's behind Obama's um, rationale for doing this deal with Iran. Um, I think he's really trying to make a stick to force Israel to the table to make concessions so that there should be a uh, Palestinian state, and he gets a big Nobel Prize for that. Well, it's a very clear paragraph. You mean he's trying to coerce Israel into committing total suicide? Um, yeah, basically, uh, as long as he gets him that uh, Nobel Peace Prize. That well, that is one of it. That's right. That is on his punch list. Seizing our guns is something he regrets he hasn't done yet. That nasty little Second Amendment, that nasty First Amendment. Those two have to go before he's gone. And then a, a Palestinian state would be a real feather in his cap when he goes on to, to, the, uh, to leading the world. That, that could be. So in other words, if Iran has the weapon, they threaten Israel. Israel has to give up Judea and Samaria. Is that it? Yeah. And uh, he'll bring them to the, all to the table, and Israel, from a, a source of weakness, a point of weakness, will have to give in. Um, but about what you said about Israel not attacking um, yet, and you were asking, where is Israel? Reminds me of the story of the German, the American, the Israeli, or hostages um, by some Arab terrorists, um, and they asked them, before we kill you, what's your last wish? The German asked for a stein of beer and some bratwurst. The American asked for a Big Mac. The Israeli asked for a kick in the behind. Um, okay, so gleefully, he, the, the terrorist kicks him in the behind. He turns around, the Israeli turns around, and kills the terrorist, and liberates the, all the other hostages. So they asked him. No, wait, 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 wait. How did, he, how did he turn around and kill the terrorist? Um, you know, whatever, Krav Maga, whatever. He, this is a joke, by the way, but it's really a. No, no, I understand, but logically, a joke has to have a logical 
cont- logical continuity to be funny. So by asking the terrorists to kick him in the behind, what, he has to put the gun down? Is that it? No. By getting by the Israeli getting kicked in the behind, it riles him up, and he goes and, and beats up the terrorists and liberates <laughs> everybody. Oh, oh. oh, he gets so enraged <laughs> that he finally, he gets so enraged he does something finally, huh? Right. They asked him, what took you so long? He said, well, you know, if I would have done something before, they would have said I started this. You know, so I had to wait. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, that's the joke. In other words, in other words, Israel wants to be seen as the as the just. Uh, they want to justify an attack on Iran, so they have to what lose the nation to do it. That's right. At this point, at, no, they don't have to lose the nation. But at this point, imagine with this agreement and the whole world getting so excited, the UN getting all excited about this agreement, and Israel's going to muck everything up by going and starting a war with Iran. I mean, the, the wrath of the world will come down on them. I mean, yeah, but no matter what Israel does, the wrath of the world's going to come down on them. Bottom line. But they got to wait for that kick in the pants so they could prove black. Right, so what would the kick in the pants be? What, what would the kick in the pants be? What is it going to be? <laughs> a point of no return. Uh, that almost by the point of no return. And what? They, what? They nuke Tel Aviv? They let Iran take out Tel Aviv? Absolutely not. But when they see that they are that close and ready... To be able to threaten everybody with the nuclear warheads, that's when they're going to attack. They can't. They can't do it before. But this agreement messes them up. How do they have the it, assurance that they? How can they have the assurance that they know whether or not Iran has a weapon? How do we know they don't have one already? Well, we don't. And even if how do we know that Iran hasn't borrowed one from from their friends across the border in Pakistan? Well, Israel's been tracking, as you remember, how they attacked that nuclear facility in Syria. You know, yes. nobody else knew who was talking about it. Nobody else, it wasn't in any papers before they actually went and attacked it and destroyed it. I hear what you're saying. Israel's in a no-win situation, no matter what they do. Because I, 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 my feeling is, is that even if there was the bona fide proof that Iran had a weapon and used the weapon, and Israel attacked and took them out, Israel would be attacked by the world community, not supported. I, I agree with you. But I mean, that's they, the truth of the matter. You know, it, it brings us to the next point. America is being overrun by illegal aliens. America is being undermined by this communist, socialist, Leninist, anti-American administration. This administration is doing everything it can to destroy the demographics and weaken the nation militarily, spiritually, morally, you name it, financially, everything it can do to undermine the nation. That's how most people see it. I worry about America with Iran having a nuclear weapon as much as I do about Israel with Iran having a nuclear weapon because Iran's been very clear. They want to take out the little Satan Israel and the big Satan America. So make no mistake about it. They see Israel and America as one. Martin, and that's for the American audience listening to this program. This Iran thing is not so much about Israel. It's about America and taking us to the doors of the oven. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Breaking news in the Savage Nation. University of California offers six choices for gender identity. The psychotic bowling pin, Janet Napolitano, has so polluted the University of California that instead of focusing on advances in learning, advances in science, advances in technology, advances in engineering, this psychotic bowling pin has made it important that admission forms are changed on the University of California in order to be inclusive and understanding. And so the psychotic, the psychotic bowling pin, Napolitano gave a speech today saying, I'm proud of the work we've done so far, but it doesn't stop there. We must look at where we can improve so everyone at UC feels respected and supported. Really? And you wonder why your learning is dying in the United States of America when psychotic bowling pins have taken over the universities. A little fact for you. The quality of sperm is declining. 85% of the sperm produced by a healthy male 
is DNA damaged. Boys are four times as likely to be autistic as girls. The average sperm count of a North American college student today, less than 50% of what it was 50 years ago. That's why the bowling pins took over. Savage.